July 1st, 2020, my ears were introduced to the sound of Crowless. I nearly passed out from the sonic assault. That's hyperbole, but it's what it felt like. Two years later, March of 2022, I get another song from them, Go Be Forgotten, in which I described as a different kind of vibe to go with the wall of sound. Here we are, two years after that, almost on the four-year anniversary of my introduction to Crowless, diving into their works again. This time we're checking out the song, I... <laughs> Uh, I think it's just supposed to be seven. It comes off of the year, comes off of the album, Years Past Matter, and each of the tracks is just a series of pipes. Track one has seven pipes, track two has eight, three has nine, all the way up until track six, which is just a continuation of it. I think they're supposed to be the Years Past Matter? I don't know, since, Ma since Matter has done something. Regardless, let's just dive in. See what Kralis has in store for us today. The choir is a nice touch. The bass resonance works very well. Cool little atmosphere. I like the harmonic movements. Any minute now, the drums are coming back though. Ooh, wait. <laughs> That's a wild decision.
I really love the atmosphere to this. Part of it is the timbre having the choir in the background, but it's the harmonic writing too. The chord progression is just gorgeous. That was a strange phrasing too. Was that nine bars? No, it's not nine bars. It was four and a half. Someone's gonna have to let me know what's up there. It's definitely four bars of four, but the fifth bar, I don't know, it's like a bar of five, eight. Yeah, so the dotted quarter accent pattern here is a nice change up of things. It's not quite as rhythmically syncopated as uh, utilizing a lot of various rhythmic ideas. But it does provide rhythmic juxtaposition to the constant 16th notes. Very full sounds. I'll be honest. 
still find it a bit overwhelming. I definitely have more of an ear for it now. It makes me want to go back to that first one. Monolith of Possession. And give it another go. See what I feel about it four years later. But uh, I will say that despite having an ear for this, despite being able to say, okay, I gotta get this now. I hear some cool things in it. It's still very overwhelming for me. And a lot of that actually comes from the progressive elements, which I don't know where you would classify this. I want to put it under progressive black metal, but I don't even know if that's a legit genre that people utilize. I mean, like death metal doesn't really have a progressive realm. They just call it technical. So that's its progressive genre. It just doesn't have prog in its title. So maybe black metal has its own also. Sort of like how progressive dance music is called intelligent dance music. Uh, we should just use the word progressive for all of it. Let's, let's wipe the genre slate clean and start over and create a uniform system for genres. We'll make a new standard that will just be another standard among all the other standards. <laughs> I'd do it though. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of progressive elements in here that to me add on to the intensity and the stress of listening to this by way of their complexity on top of the already anxiety inducing music that black metal typically is for me it is a very aggressive uh, oppressive sound very in your face weight on your shoulders you're going to feel this wall of sound approach and then just put complexity on top of that which makes it feel even heavier but I do think that it adds to the cool factor, if, if that's a thing. Uh, I definitely enjoyed this more than traditional black metal, even though this is still very traditional in a lot of ways. And so, you know, we've listened to some stuff this week, and I'm like, is this even black metal? This is definitely black metal adjacent. I think this is the first song this week that I'm like, yeah, this is just straight up black metal. <laughs> uh, but I do appreciate that there's a lot of new things in here that help elevate the genre and push it in a new direction from that generic third wave style. So let's get into some of that. What is cool that's going on here? First of all, we have an entire minute and a half intro of no drums, which means we really just get the harmonic writing of the two guitars and bass. I thought this was rather awesome. Uh, oh, this is kind of weird. They don't have a lot of monthly listeners. 5,200. It's one of those moments where... Uh, they're, they're well known within this community, which made me think that they were bigger than they were. But I think it's one of those occasions where uh, just happened to be the group of people know about them. But also they kind of reached meme status within the community because of my initial reaction to them. So, yeah, I just kind of figured they were bigger than they are. Anyways, um, where was it going? Oh, yeah, yeah, harmony writing. So we have the 16th notes coming from the two guitars. And they're crafting this really cool stuff. First of all, I think the first idea we have a solid note on the left side and the right side is moving around. This is really cool. We spoke about this earlier this week. I can't remember what band that was, but uh, creating this, uh, this pedal tone for all the other moving ideas to be judged against harmonically. So we have this moving dyad idea that's creating this... Um, consistent showcasing of new emotions and atmospheres, new characteristics of these chords, but the only thing that's moving is the uh, the right instrument. I think that was correct. <laughs> I can't remember which one is static now. Um, I just mentioned it too, man. An old brain of mine. Anyways, one of the instruments is static, the other one's moving, and you get to hear the progression of these emotions, of this, of the chords, through just the single moving idea. And I think that's really cool. It's just not something we see too often in black metal. I think because mo both guitars tend to want to be doing something, so they both move, and we get these moving dyads that kind of move around each other, not like complete stepwise. They're sort of bouncing around. It seems to be the standard way of writing um, black metal dyads. And uh, yeah, just having the stationary idea, this home 
for the other note to for the rest of the guitar's notes to be played around is a very cool idea. But from here, both of the guitars started moving, and then we get some bass stuff in here, these big resonant tones at the bottom. The bass sounds gorgeous, just this huge round tone. And uh, yeah, all this stuff starts coming together, and I start to hear the atmosphere. What kind of chords are we dealing with? What kind of chord progressions? And it's all very larger than life. There's something very awesome about it in the same way that... Uh, you know, Baroque music tends to be, uh, especially the Baroque music that was utilized for the Catholic, uh, the Catholic church, uh, kind of evoking this, this power and fear of God in the music and the larger than lifeness of that, of, of creating music of worship. Um, and I hear that in here. It's very cool. The progressions also aren't simple two or four chord progressions, we have ones that are longer, such as an eight chord progression. It allows the movement to be more diverse while also allowing some of the chord movements to be uh, less wide. And it allows for more nuance within the progression itself because it has more time to develop and build and grow. And it's just, it is such a treat to listen to some of this. Absolutely lovely stuff. Um, I don't think the chord progression changes much though once they establish this eight chord progression they use it all over the place um, that's not to say that the chords are always the same maybe they're in different orders maybe we bump everything up to another key but i don't think i really heard too many different atmospheres out of this track they all consistently stuck within the same realm of emotions um like i said though about the 90 second mark the drums come in The drums and the vocals are my least favorite aspect about black metal. Sometimes they can be very cool. Usually they're, they're not. And I really loved this harmonic focused intro. And then I heard the drums start. I'm like, here we go. And then we get like these 16th note ideas. And I'm like, okay, here's the repetition. And then they stop for like half of a beat go into a fill and start over again and the whole band actually stops and there's this half beat pause in here i'm like oh my attention's been perked up now what are we doing here that's very interesting i think that was the only time in the entire song that something interesting rhythmically happened <laughs> to come from the band everything else retains a pretty rigid 16th note approach to it um and i was a little let down after I thought something cool was going to happen, and then, and then nothing did for a while. Um, so yeah, then we get a lot of a lot of alternating snare and bass. A lot of it, but some cool stuff did come out of the drums, and I want to focus on that real quick. Uh, we do have some really cool symbol patterns in here, and I think. Honestly, when it comes to black metal drumming, if you're going to do the 16th note blast beats, double bass kicks, alternating snare and bass, whatever, just to keep this rigid rhythm going, you got to pretty it up a little bit. And I still have not heard anything yet that excites me as much as Exercises in Futility 5 from Ngwa. That The drums on that song are a gold standard for me as far as black metal is concerned, and it really only is that first verse i think it is it kicks off about a minute in it is probably the only black metal song that i return to every couple of months and i remember it and i go watch that drum cam because it blows my mind every time so when this drummer comes in and starts playing some cool cymbal ideas alongside the the guitar accents i thought that was very cool eventually later on we'll start to hear this uh this dotted note idea and what a dot is when you put it on a note is that it says that this note's length is one and a half times as normal so if it's quarter notes which in four four they get the beat one two three four those are all quarter notes a dotted quarter note would be one and a half of a beat which is kind of it'd be one two and three and four it's kind of rhythmically jagged right and we actually hear that here now i don't know exactly what was dotted 
I think we are dealing with dotted eighth notes against rigid sixteenth notes. Either way, we have this idea of grouping up three against one, which ends up working out very well because the dotted note is placed throughout the drum kit. One might be a crash cymbal, one might be a tom hit, one might be a snare accent, the other might be a ride cymbal hit, and it allows this, this rhythmic syncopation and polyrhythm to exist throughout the kit. So it is both dynamic rhythmically against the consistent 16th note idea we're getting, but it's also dynamic timbre-wise as we're getting to hear all these different sounds within it. That was another very cool idea we had rhythmically. Um, I think there was one other that we had around the five minute mark. I cannot remember what it was though. But there are a couple of places where the drummer pops out with something kind of cool, a little different. We don't really get a lot of it though. And a lot of this song ends up being the alternating bass and snare forever. Constant 16th notes all the time. It is my least favorite part of this track. And I kind of came to the conclusion it's my least favorite part of black metal in general. Especially since the intro lacked it. And I enjoyed that. I've, I've mentioned many times uh, in this on this channel that I like black metal's harmonic element. It incorporates chord progressions you just don't hear in metal too often outside of the more technical or progressive realms of death metal or progressive metal. I mean the more mainstream aggressive sounds you just they tend to stick with metal harmony. And I think black metal is a genre that is sort of built up around this idea of harmonic exploration. I've always thought it was a bit of a shame that I didn't like it despite having cool chord progressions in it. And I think I finally figured it's the drums. It's the repetition. Granted, I do like some more rhythmic ideas coming out of the guitars too. But the drums, this song, and we checked out another one um, earlier this week. And can't remember what that one was either. Oh, was that Hannah Molle? Yeah, I think it was Hannah Molle. Uh, from a couple days ago, I think. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, the drums are so repetitive that to me it's like listening to a bad dance song like you would find in the club or something with just like the most annoying sound in the background that keeps the beat and it just doesn't change ever and the drums reach that point for me and it's not just one song it's all the songs all black metal uses this and it just becomes such an annoying part i just want something more than it but it's so solidified itself within the genre you really can't get away from it even in more progressive stuff this is a very cool song on so many levels except the drums it's the one part uh and i don't know how to fix that i don't know if it should be fixed i mean that would be like me or like a metalhead going into a jazz club and saying nah y'all are doing this all wrong let me show you how it is and, you know, trying to change jazz to make it something else. Black metal is just a very repetitive uh, genre in the drum work. Everything else. I've heard some really cool progressive vocals. I've heard clean vocals. I've heard emo screams over black metal. We've heard gazy guitar work. We've heard super cool melodic work. Uh, chord progressions that range from jazz to classical to metal. I mean, the folk. Black metal guitar work is super varied. Vocal work is super varied. Bass work, you have everything from the bass doesn't exist in this, in this song to the bass dominates the song and pulls the whole thing forward with progressive bass lines. Drums, you have, you have your share of blast beats or alternating bass kicks or 16th note bass kicks. It's, it's just that rigidity. I just don't hear as much variety in that realm. And it's the one thing I'm finding is a huge hurdle for me. I'm kind of tempted, maybe in a few months, maybe next year, maybe July of next year, since that seems to be when we listen to black metal on this channel. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, we'll revisit this theme, but particularly aiming to find black metal with different drum work to it. Um... 
But I mean, at the same time, it's really hard to just dismiss it, though, because I can't play drums like this. And it's still, you know, as much as the spectacle kind of wears off over time, if I sit down and really think about it, it's still bonkers that somebody can sit down, play this eight minute song, get through this eight minute song and have stamina to play the rest of a 40 minute set or something like it's just how uh, there is still a spectacle element of it that I still find fascinating, even if sonically it is not my cup of tea. And I do understand the oppressiveness. If the drums are removed, the song might become listenable to me, not just because of the repetitive factor, but because it's no longer as heavy and weighty. I understand why the drums are there. Uh, it's just, it's a real big negative aspect for me. Uh, speaking of rhythmic changes though, we do have some cool things that show up in the guitars. You see at the beginning, a lot of it is harmonic based. As I mentioned uh, at the very start of the song, we have one instrument that just sits on a note and another instrument that changes notes every four hits. So it'd be every beat because 16th notes are breaking a beat into four uh, parts and we're in four, four, 16 notes per bar. Uh, that's how that all works. M music is a lot of math. It, it, it kind of really is. <laughs> um, but we also have some changes to that formula. Once we kick into the first section with lyrics, the guitars whip out these wild riffs, sometimes with stops and breaks within them to create a, a bit of temporal ebb and flow, but also utilizing more than just 16th notes, moving down to 8th notes at times. It is fascinating to listen to the guitars pull out these typical atmospheric black metal ideas and then shift to what feels to me just really fast death metal riffs and bouncing back and forth between the two of them where one is more and one is more focused on writing these rule of cool ideas. How does this sound if I jump between all these notes and have a little bit of melodic writing to it? And how does it feel when I primarily focus on the dyads, really allowing each of the chords to shine through the rest of the noise? And I like that. I really do. I uh, you know the 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 speed of it all. It definitely wears me down a little bit, but to have this juxtaposition is a huge boon for me. Just having a little bit of contrast, even though it's not a lot, just this little bit of contrast in the guitar work makes me infinitely more interested in listening to what the guitars are doing over the course of this song. What I find wild too is sticking with the progressive element is that not only do we just jump back and forth between these two where they have this riffier element and this more harmonic element, but there's actually a lot of, a lot of both of them as I mentioned, the chord progression I don't think changes too much, but how they approach it does. Is one instrument staying on a pedal tone, a home note, or are both of them moving? Are they moving together or in different steps? We hear quite a few different ways of approaching this purely atmospheric, purely chord-based approach to the guitar work. When it comes to the riffs, I swear there's like seven riffs in this song and they're all different. Um... They're all fast. They're all technical. It isn't just, uh, you know, right hand stuff trying to play really fast. It's also really technical movement on the left hand, jumping around the neck and hitting the right strings and being precise with all that. And then finding, you know, multiple ways to do this for this one song. I'm going to assume they do this on all the tracks. One hour's worth of music of hundreds of riffs. How do you come up with all of this at this speed? And uh, I'm sure some riffs are going to be cooler than others. You know, when you put so much into art, you're you're going to have some duds in there. And even I say dud, like a six out of ten riff instead of a nine out of ten. Right? Not bad, just not as good as some of the best. Um, it just blows my mind that they can write so much music and have it consistently be pretty good, to to great, to awesome. Uh, that blows my mind. Now here's something else, right? Black metal, I don't think is necessarily a genre that pulls sloppy players to it. We have heard some sloppy playing within black metal. More so, I feel like, than other genres, except Doom, especially Funeral Doom. I feel like there's a general rawness to it, but oh, man, I attribute that to the tempo. I can't even play accurately at, at like 30 BPM, so I don't... 
I'm not going to expect anyone else to, unless you have a metronome going, and even then, you'd have to have it at double time so it can subdivide for you, because it gets rough at such a slow tempo. But anyways, um, you know, black metal, is it, it's a genre I kind of associate a little bit of sloppiness to. When I want precise, clean, fast playing, I tend to think of technical death metal a lot more than black metal. But here, we have that same approach of perfection to the playing. When you listen to the guitars, there is a very rigid timing to everything. Both of the guitars are perfectly in time, this entire song. They're perfectly in time with the bass. All three of those are perfectly in time with the drums. The production allows for all of this clarity to be heard. There is absolutely no room for muddiness in here, whether that muddiness is a uh, uh, production side just having a bit more of a mid-fi sound, compression and stuff overlapping. There's none of that muddiness allowed in the performance. Everything is technical and precise and perfect. It creates a little bit of a spectacle display for it in the same way that I view tech death. The same reason I would watch a music video for Archspire to see them just play all of this really fast stuff and not drop a beat. It is absolutely bonkers, and that same attention to detail is present here. And they utilize it to great effect, not just for the general sound, but to explore <laughs> really wild ideas. For instance, they wanted to keep the 16th note idea progressing forward at the very beginning of the song. It was about minute three or so, and we just got done listening to the atmospheric opening, we listened to one of the first riffs that they came in on, and then they introduced this very cool section that keeps the 16th note idea going with a fluctuating accent point. See, the thing is, with 16th note attacks on a guitar, you have your pick and you're just picking up and down really fast, trying to make them all as equal as possible. The point is that you don't really have accents in black metal, that it doesn't sound like it's going where you have that initial attack at the beginning of a group of eight or a group of 16 or whatever to create that pulse. You want to remove that pulse at all costs. You want it to feel consistent, as consistent as possible. And uh, they didn't want to do that. Now, I want you to imagine picking a guitar as fast as this, where your downstrokes had more accent, more movement, more physical force pushed into the string than pulling the, stri the string back up and trying to keep that consistent. Is it possible? Sure. Is it going to be tough at that speed? You betcha. So they did something else entirely, and I thought this was very, very freaking cool, is that they shifted from 16th note picking to 8th note. So they're only picking half as fast, and they're utilizing hammer-ons in order, and a hammer-on is when you pick one string, and then instead of picking it again, you use the force of placing your, uh, your finger on the string to vibrate the string itself. They use the hammer-on to give a lighter attack between the heavier picking strings and it makes this warbly sound where the intensity is moving up and down at a super fast pace. And it was just like, what? Like it's, it's not, it, to me it actually sounds easier to play than the constant 16th notes. Um, but it's one of those decisions where it's like, you think about it in retrospect, you're like, that makes perfect sense. But it's not something you would have ever thought about. Right? They're geniuses because they thought of it, not because it's difficult to do. Uh, and I absolutely love that section because it solves a really neat problem. How do you create uh, changing accent points when you're playing as fast as this and still be as precise as the rest of the music demands? And they found a way and it actually sounds really cool. So yeah, I mean, this is just a very progressive song overall as far as rhythmic ideas go, guitar ideas, riffs versus atmosphere, utilizing the bass. The drums even have their progressive moments. I think the big thing that stands out to me is the vocals. They're just not very strong and not very interesting in, in any way. 
And as far as clarity goes, they're the one that sounds the most compressed and stuffed into the mix. Sometimes I even didn't realize the vocals had started until probably halfway into the vocal line. So, I mean, I guess some things just have to stick around, but I thought it would have been really cool to have a different vocal style here. But again, I might be asking for changes that don't work very well as a black metal song. Let me check out some lyrics real quick, and then we will wrap this one up. Uh, I've had to look up too many words on this one, uh, which is a, a positive thing, but also reminds me there's so much more to language than what I have. I'm still not entirely sure what it's about. It seems to be the proof of death and the afterlife. I, th I think it speaks about... trying to stave off death by spiritual means, possibly. I almost view it as uh, in... So here's the thing, right? An afterlife assumes there is life after death. So death is technically defeated if you have a life in whatever say a, a christian perspective heaven and hell that is still a life that is still living experience where death would be more of a non-existence and so this song basically says that people use spirituality and religion in an effort to seek immortality to stave off the concept of death death is so scary that we will imagine a literal life in death rather than the concept of death itself and it basically says that that's all not true, and uh, it's lies and contradicting, and yep, it's not how it. That's not how it goes. <laughs> uh, at the very end, it says that your spirituality is like dust; neither a memory nor ghost remains. That when you die, that's that's it. That's the end. Now it does so with a lot of words, such as one stanza that says, In echopraxic convulsions, hollow prostrations to outdistance doom to stave off an ending. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's some good words there. Um But I think I'm I'm grasping at straws here. There's quite a few lines that I just don't get. The beginning uh evokes the Ouroboros, the serpent coils upon coils a thousand thousand fathoms are coils upon coils scales shroud the earth and the faceted kabachan eyes become as the sun the firmament becomes a writing tapestry i don't quite understand what all of this is going on about to me it's it's the concept of something that shouldn't be becoming another the idea of faceted kabachan eyes i went and looked this up Kabokan is the opposite of faceted gems. So a faceted Kabokan gem would be an oxymoron. You can't have that. They're, opposite, they're opposing ways to craft and polish a gem. And then it says that firm, uh, the firmament becomes a writing tapestry. That's not exactly what it's used for. It's, it's about these conundrums of things that don't go together, like life after death does that's kind of where i came to that conclusion and then of course the idea of out distancing doom staving off the ending and of course the idea that spirituality becomes dust that's what it seems to me to be about is just uh you know a thesis about how an afterlife isn't a congruent experience with death itself which, I mean, it's, it's their opinion to say. None of us know what happens in the end. But I, I can see their perspective on this if I'm reading into it correctly. What that has to do with the music, I don't know. But there are a lot of moments of awe baked into the atmosphere of this song in a way that could certainly lead to the concept of afterlifes or uh, deities death, non-existence, a lot of big ideas that are tough to grasp as humans. So it's possible that that's the angle they were going for with that. But there's also the overbearing weight, 
which could just be the concept of death itself. Or it could just be that they're a black metal band and they wrote some black metal music and then wrote some very heavy metal lyrics to it. <laughs> That's also possible too. Uh, but yeah, these are my thoughts on Kralis's 7 is what I'm going to call it. Uh, 7 Pipes. I also like I... <laughs> But it's really tough to distinguish all of the amounts of eyes across the six tracks. So maybe that one's not as good of a descriptor. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this track? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives on this track. Toss all that stuff down in the comments. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. Takes you to this menu, you can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for this one. We do have a special selection, I believe, coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.